Joining me now from Washington, D.C., former Deputy Assistant Attorney General and founding partner of the law firm DeGeneva and Tonsing, Victoria Tonsing. Victoria, legally speaking, still no mm. evidence of conspiracy, no, still no evidence of collusion, which is technically not a crime. Conspiracy would be a crime. But let's talk about what we, we know from the Flynn sentencing uh, memo. Apparently, he's a pretty good witness for Robert Mueller, uh, if you kind of read between the lines. Uh, one quote says, substantial assistance to the Russia investigation and should not get jail time because of that reward. This is a reward, I guess, for what? Is it a reward for just simply cooperating? Or is it a reward for giving uh, substance to Robert Mueller? What do you think? Well, I want to talk about the, the Michael Flynn case in just a second, but I want to address you, your question, Graham. Uh, and, and as it was read very carefully, he gave substantial information about the context of, of the relationship between who? The transition team and Russian officials. My goodness, isn't a presidential transition team supposed to be talking to foreign governments? I hope they were also talking to Mexico, Canada, Israel. A whole, I hope they were talking to a whole bunch of countries. That is not against the law. That didn't say campaign officials and the Russian government. It said transitional fiction. So now let me tell you this, because this is really important when I, I mean, this is just pointing out the sham of it all. The Michael Flynn case started with a crime, but the crime was not Michael Flynn's. It was the crime of a senior U.S. official, as it was described, leaking information, classified information, to David Ignatius, who calls himself a journalist but is really a Democratic flack. And, and it was about the classified information was the conversations that Michael Flynn had with Ambassador Kislyak. And in so leaking this information, the leaker also committed the felony of unmasking Michael Flynn. Right. Where is the investigation of that? And how did he get that information? Yeah, also, uh, th that would be spying, uh, domestic spying. So is there a warrant to back that up? I'd like to know the answers to all those things. And remember, we have to... It was to a FISA warrant. We have to... And, 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 it was a FISA right. authorization. But, but uh, making the unmasking of this person public is, is a violation uh, of federal statute. And, and where are the FISA judges holding people to account here? There's a whole host of questions. And we also have to remember one more thing, uh, Victoria, and that is Robert Mueller broke mm. Michael F Flynn. I mean from a philosophical standpoint and from a financial mm -hmm. standpoint. And that's why he's cooperating. He's cooperating because he, he literally drove Mueller, drove Flynn into bankruptcy. What choice does he has, have but to cooperate here? Hey, the, the, the plot is even worse than what I just described. That was the setup for it. But this was all coordinated because in his column, David Ignatius, that Democratic flack, opined that Flynn had violated the Logan Act. And so Sally Yates, who Trump should not have but did leave at the Justice Department, used that as a pretext to send the FBI over to question Michael Flynn about his conversations with the Russian ambassador. Now, there's two things wrong with that, Graham. One of them is they already had the transcript of these conversations, so they didn't need to question him about what was in it. But the second thing is they used the Logan Act as a pretext. Now, you know what the Logan Act forbids? unauthorized negotiations with a foreign country. Sure. I mean, you know, John, John Kerry went over and talked to Iran and tried to keep, tell them to just outweigh the Trump administration. He was not authorized. But you cannot tell me that anybody, by law, somebody in that trans transition team is authorized to speak to foreign countries. Uh, they are obligated to so speak to... So it was to, all a pretext. They're, they're obligated to speak yeah, to foreign entities be because practice. they are the incoming administration. Yeah. Um, but there's more to the Mueller sentencing memo for Michael Flynn. Significant number of contacts, significant number of interviews with Robert Mueller, 19 interviews with the special counsel or Department uh, of Justice. Do you think in your heart that, that Flynn is giving Mueller what he wants in terms of material mm. information? Or do you think that he's giving Mueller just unfettered cooperation, which is what Mueller wants as well? The latter, unfettered cooperation. I don't think he can milk anything out of him that he doesn't have. There was, there was no coordination between the Trump campaign and the Russian government during the campaign. The, and so you can't give somebody what you, what you don't have. Uh, 
there he is. He's, he's going to every single session. He's answering questions, and, and that's all he could do. I think Mueller knows that he would be in deep doo-doo coming in asking a federal court to sentence Michael Flynn to any, anything, anything. And that's why he gave the, okay, no sentencing. Want to see more videos like this? Click on the link below and subscribe to One America News on YouTube. And call your cable provider and kindly demand that One America News is added to your lineup. Call and subscribe today.